First of all, thank you so much for, uh, uh, for inviting me. I guess you all didn't have anything to do with it, but uh, <laughs> Pastor Steve did. And uh, I must tell you, I was delighted to get his phone call uh, and to talk with those who are responsible for uh, the men here at Capitol Baptist. Uh, as he says, it's uh, Milton Harding, and uh, I do go back uh, a ways with uh, his son, Jeremiah. Uh, can you imagine Jeremiah hanging on the rim? Yeah, we had to tell him stop that. He was bending up the rims and snatching them down and breaking backboards and all of that. Um, but I must commit, uh, confess rather, he did have a decent uh, jump shot from a distance. You know, everybody that comes into the program, that's their claim to fame, is uh, shooting jump shots from a distance. Somebody's got rebounds, somebody's got rebounds. Anyway, none of the lot. It, it was even more joy seeing him in this place this morning because his father... Uh, pastors here, and you can look at Jeremiah and tell he's old enough to make a decision about whether he wants to be here or not, but nonetheless, he's here, so that, that's encouraging to me. Um, so where do we start? We're going to have some fun. Uh, I think we're going to have some fun. Um, you pass out those little cups? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Can we, uh, can we give Jim a big hand for what he's doing? In fact, we have a lot of... This, this group over here that I met when I came in with smiles, I mean, I knew they were here a lot earlier than we got here. Uh, they've been at it for a while, too. So while you're sitting there burping eggs and bacon, you, <laughs> we'll put our hands together for them, too, because a lot of folks were involved in this process. Um, hopefully you have your Bibles with you or you can get access to a Bible because that will be important as well. Um, um, this, this has got to go way past Super Bowl, right? I, let me say that again, because uh, do I need a mic? This, this event, no, someone said no. This event here has to go way past it just being a Super Bowl guy. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so I mean, how many times, how many more pieces of bacon and scrambled eggs can you eat at a men's gathering? Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, if we did all of this and we all came together for this moment here, it's got to be more than about the Super Bowl and it's got to be more than about bacon and eggs. That's what I'm trying to say. You can eat bacon and eggs at home, right? Some of the, you all that still have a good relationship at home, you can eat them at home. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get, get down and dirty pretty quickly here because we don't have much time. Pastor Steve asked me if I could get this done before 4 o'clock, and I will. I will. So I hope you all will. Last with me, there are some things that are being handed out right now, things that are near and dear to my heart um, for men in general, but uh, as we go, so goes the nation. Not just the homes, but the nation. It was God's design. And so I thought today we would do, let me get this out of the way too. Some of you, when you came in this morning, if you didn't sneak in here, saw a uh, wonderful young lady downstairs sitting at a table and... Um, uh, I am so blessed and fortunate uh, to have her uh, as my wife. Um, she has been through this drill a number of times because of me, and but also the calling on her life. And so I have some resources here that I would say uh, we've locked every door in the church except the one you came through. So you can't get out without us knowing about it. And, so, and we put little, uh, 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 what do you call those things? Trackers in all the resources. So we know when one's leaving out of the building. I want you all to, especially uh, men wanted to apply within as a five-day devotion. Men, say five. 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 You, you, we, we <laughs> Unless it's in a sporting event. Uh, how many of you like to fish? How long will you wait for a fish to bite? Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, spoken like a, a participant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so five-day devotional designed that way, written that way, for you to interact with your God and my God. And if truth be known, in this building, in this room right here this morning, it's necessary. If you think it's not, look around in the culture and see if that culture isn't screaming for you. And it's screaming for you, not because of you, but because if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a light and salt in that culture. Same culture I'm a part of. And, and, and they're screaming for it. So uh, men want it, apply within. Uh, it's a five-day uh, devotional booklet that I wrote. Uh, you can find that down at the table. And then just in the last two weeks, I was able to get uh, 
these completed, volumes two and three. One's been out for a while, but 31 Days of Unconditional Love is volume one. Same thing for volume two is volume two and three. Uh, that's, do the math, what is that, Jeremiah? 93 days. We'll wait all day for a fish. Yeah, so look to invest some of these. Re oh, yeah, and then the final one is a, a CD, and I know some of you are saying, what's a CD? Nobody uses a CD anymore. Uh, but, 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 but some of you do, and if you don't, you know someone who does. Adam, where are you? That's the name of the CD, and it is about a reset in your own life for your uh, vocation, you know, what, your calling, if you will. Uh, what, what is that location, your vocation, and certainly uh, you having sin domination. So these are just some resources, enough said about that. But as I said to you earlier, and even if you got it all together, I won't ask you a show of hands of, you, of all of you all who have it all together in Jesus. Don't raise your hand. But I, if you have it all together, then think about somebody that you know that doesn't. Do you know at least three people who don't have it all, three men who don't have it all together? Yeah. Uh, fathers, it's a great devotion to do with your sons. Um, how many of you know that the enemy is not waiting until they're 18? Man, 18 is like old man in the street now. Because they get knocked off at 11 and 12 and 13 years old. And you say, well, you know, that's not happening here, but it's happening. It's coming to your neighborhood soon, unfortunately. Now, listen, we are responsible for it. Look at your neighbor sitting next to you and say, if you know Jesus, now look at them and say it. If you know Jesus, you're responsible. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So please, if you will and if you can. And if you know what, here's another thing. Oh. To my Korean community and uh, Latinos community, this book, Men Wanted, is written in, in those languages as well. I'm not playing around. God is not just coming for um, <laughs> men who speak English. Amen? As a matter of fact, you don't even need to speak a language and you can hear from him. You, you remember Abraham, right? Does anybody remember Abraham? Well, y'all got to act like y'all in this room with me here now. You, oh, I know what you were saying. You might have thought I was talking about Abraham Johnson. Right? No, 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 no. Abraham from the scriptures is what I'm saying. Abraham, oh, see, see, I had to lock in first. Yeah, Abraham just had the voice of God. He just had the voice of God. I want us to be driven to the scriptures. These resources only drive you to the scriptures so you can read those enough and be familiar with the voice of God. Because you're listening to a voice. Yeah. I see some of you all with uh, 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 <laughs> cowboy jerseys on in here. Uh, you, you are listening to a voice. Yeah, for sure. It may not be the right voice, but you are listening to a, a voice. But nonetheless, I would encourage you all that, that way. Um, what I thought we would do first, and I think, Jim, you passed them all out. On your tables before you, minus the coffee stain, it's funny, you know, I said, no, Jim, don't pass these out too early. People will get bacon stains all over them or something. And lo and behold, <laughs> lo and behold, I have a coffee stain on mine. <laughs> anyway, on your table, we're going to talk about these uh, particular areas, getting a bead, getting a bead on. How many hunters in here? One or two. Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, say it again. Used to was. Okay, we'll take used to was. Anyway, I, I remember... Uh, so, so, so he, yeah. well, yeah, okay, we'll take that. Okay. Given it's the day, we'll take that today. Nonetheless, what I want to, what, what, <laughs> when you get a bead on your prey, you bring them in the sight and you get a bead on your prey. So it's the same thing, getting a bead on our discipleship. And, and the thing that's missing in, in, in the culture today, even in the churches, we got a lot of people in there, but are they true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? Turn to John chapter 8, if you will. John chapter 8, and we're going to do a little bit different here because I think you all thought you might just get a lecture here. But I like to be interactive. I like to know what you had for breakfast. That's how close I want to smell you. I want us to be interactive, if you will. Um, and we're way past all the stuff, right? I mean, this is, we only got a couple hours to spend with each other. Um, 
Did I tell you John chapter 8? Yes. And verse, uh, what did I say, 32? If you're there, somebody read that because I like interaction. 8 and verse 32. You can do 31 too because if you look at it, it's on the back of your sheet for those of you all who are just using them for armrest. But go, you, Brother uh, Bradford, you were going to read it? Yeah, you were going to read John chapter 8 on the back there for me? Mm. Mm. My Lord. My, 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 my. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I submit to you, I, this is not my first rodeo, and I know in a building like this, in a room this size, there's some men in here who are not free. I know that. I know that. Not because I've been reading your mail or none of that, but the uh, Spirit of God does. And in order to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to be free. You can't even love unconditionally, agape. You can't even love unconditionally unless you're free. If we look at the culture today, we see we put a lot of requirements on people to be loved. You've got to be a Democrat. You've got to be a Republic. You've got to be white. You've got to be black. You've got to be this. You've got to be that. I wasn't trying to rhyme that, but it did. Um, but in order for me to, not even to love you, but just accept you. And so, anyway, uh, draw your instructions from the Word of God. Jesus says, if you continue, to those Jews who believe, if you continue in my Word, then you are truly my disciples. Oh, I love it when he put truly my disciples. Because if you can be a true disciple, you can be a what? Did you say false? Did I hear someone say false? Yeah, yeah. If you can be a true disciple, you can certainly have false disciples. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about, because I submit to you, brothers, right in this church and many other churches across the land. We got a mixture of everything. Amen? I mean, I'm not going to have to teach you a way to put the amens, right? You'll just do that naturally. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. I want us to take some little moment steps, if you will, brief steps, and visit some scriptures that I want you to apply to your heart this morning. Um, if I were to ask a question, and please don't raise your hand uh, unless you're free. How many of you all would lie in a heartbeat if you had a chance? I'm not even looking. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear what I said. Oh, okay. How many of you all would lie in a heartbeat if you had a chance? Don't raise your hand there. I don't want, to, I don't want the Sunday morning answer. I really don't. I just want you to wrestle with that because this this uh, little script we're going to go through right now is going to uh, turn us into something. So write down in that first block, you'll see following, following. And over in Luke chapter 14 and verse 25, we'll get some, uh, a scripture that tells us about uh, what it was like for Jesus uh, as he traveled and ministered. Uh, in uh, chapter 14 and verse 25, it says, now, large crowds, everyone say large crowds. large crowds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Large crowds were going along with him. In some of your translations, it has following. Large crowds were following him, and he turned to them and, and said. Okay? The emphasis I want to make here is, are you a part of the following? Now, let me help you with that determination. Jesus turned to that crowd, starting in verse 26, and says, Unless you hate your father, your mother, your, your wife, your children, uh, the goldfish, the dog, I'm paraphrasing, unless you love them less. In other words, he said, prior, prioritize me as number one. Here's what he says. Don't even follow me. Now, you don't hear many pastors telling large crowds that in this day and time. Yeah, we can get accustomed to large, past, uh, large crowds, rather. Because that indicates or suggests that maybe something good's going on. Guess what? I can, I can plop some bacon and eggs on that grill over there and, pretty, and get a pretty good size crowd. Oh, say amen if you know what I'm talking about. So there's the following, okay? If you look all the way over to the right there, you'll see some colors on your page, okay? 
So that'll come in important uh, to you. How many of you all do not have a, those are not candy. That's not candy at your tables. It should be just a little, little, <laughs> a little dish of beads. Yes, great, great. Okay. Um, and, and then the next thing we have, look at John 6. This is going to be a very defining moment for the next one, for disciples. Because if I ask many of you all here, if you were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, you may have a unique response uh, that would identify with disciple or being a disciple. Did I say John 6? Okay, listen, let me read you some verses. Let me read you some verses. I'm going to start in verse 60. Stay with me. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a difficult statement. Who can listen to it? Now, Jesus spoke the words of his father to this crowd, to these to these people. Verse 60. Uh, Therefore, many of his disciples. So we see that these are his disciples. You see that H there is a capital H, which usually denotes they're talking about Jesus. OK. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, this is a difficult statement. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, conscious that his disciples grumbled at this, said to them, does this cause you to stumble? What then if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and a life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. And he was saying, for this reason, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him from the father. Now, 66 is where we're about to land here. I want you to I want you to hear something here. As a result of this, many of whose disciples? His. We're talking about Jesus. Many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. Let's let that settle in a little bit. If you look all the way over across the page there, you'll see a color associated with that. Let's move on to the next one. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll flip over to Paul here for just a second, the Apostle Paul. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2, Paul wanted to get back to Corinth with a letter of instructions. One thing about uh, Paul, Paul was always uh, evangelizing or shepherding, more often than sh shepherding. Uh, let's look at verse uh, 1. How many Eagles fans do we have in here? Three? Okay. <laughs> How about Cowboy fans? Whoa, 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 whoa. So I'm just assume the rest of you all are locked. <laughs> okay, let's move along. First Corinthians chapter three and verse one. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as men of flesh, as to infants or babes in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you are not able, for you are still fleshly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not fleshly? And are you not walking like mere men? That word uh, mere there, denoting the type of men they are, an adjective, if you will. But it reflects to a babe in Christ. So these are believers. They are just babes in Christ. You'll see those sitting on, on pews and chairs on Sunday morning as well. They've been in the church for 72 and a half years. Now, if, <laughs> if I plopped a baby beside you and told you that baby was 72 years old, you'd look at me like I was nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you would. If you were sitting next to him, you say, we got a problem here. Yeah. And so there are believers in Christ who are just babes. And do you recognize something about babes in the natural? Do you, <laughs> do you know that babes can poop their pants and still be completely happy? I mean, many of us have sat out in the, in the yard on a summer day with the breeze blowing and little Johnny's out there in the yard playing with no T-shirt on or nothing, just his diaper. And you're sitting there in a lounge chair and little Johnny walks by you 
and you start, tears start forming in your eye because little John is carrying a load. You just can't stand it. But guess what little John is doing? He's playing and having a great time. But he doesn't drop the load that is just, I mean, it's causing you to gag. And you got to change that boy's britches. Now, here's the deal. What's little Johnny going to do when you tell him to come here, you got to change his britches? He'll fight your tooth. And, oh, yeah, he'll fight your tooth and nail all the way to the changing table. We got people in the church just like that. Babes in Christ. They don't know they're getting off, giving off an odor like that. And sometimes they're not even conscious of it. They need a diaper change. So the pastor gives a sermon on Sunday morning, a fresh, fresh brand new diaper. But they'll fight him tooth and nail, try to get that diaper on. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we getting there now? I think we're getting there now. Don't, don't you think we're getting there now? Yeah, yeah, because it exists right here in this room. Listen, I don't know. I, one or two people in here I know, and I say I know it from the standpoint. It's not like Steve and I eat together every day, but I know his spirit, and I hung out with his son for way longer than I wanted to, but no, 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 no this man knows I love him. The whole time he was there. But, but for the rest of you, this is kind of like our first. How many of you all have ever seen me before, heard me before, any of that? See what I'm saying? Nobody here? How many of you even care? Uh, are you, okay, so, 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 so here we go. Here we go. So we have a following. We have disciples who turned and followed him no more. We have babes who are actually in the mix. <laughs> do you know, what will a baby do when they're hungry? Are you going to get any rest? No. Not till you feed them. And guess what? What's going what's to gonna happen when you try to give them four or five green peas versus, versus some ice cream or cake? It's just like that in the church. They only want to eat what they want to eat. They don't necessarily want to eat the stuff that's spiritually healthy for them. Somebody say, yeah. now listen, let me tell you something that you all don't know. Quietness is just like saying amen. Yeah, you may as well say amen. <laughs> amen means you agree with me. When you're quiet, that means you agree with me because I'm in your tulips. I know I am. All right, all right. So let's move over to a fun place now. We've got those levels, and now let's move to John chapter 15. I wanted to lay a little groundwork. So I haven't even started teaching yet. That's why we're not going to get out here at 4 o'clock. Um, did I tell you, John? Chapter 15. Yes, sir. Um, let me get over there. Okay, here we go. So now Jesus, if you got the red letter edition, Jesus is speaking these words. And he's talking about a relationship that ex should exist between those who are his and him. There should be a relationship exchange. How many of you all have ever been in a relationship? Now, I didn't say a love relationship, but just a relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so uh, let me just give you this news flash. He is the God of relationships. His whole desire was relationship. And so when he sent his son to die on the cross for us, that was about relationship. Because he had a relationship with Adam and Eve. That ball got dropped, but he didn't leave it dropped. He sent his son. And that's why we can sit in this room this morning and eat eggs, eggs and bacon. Eggs and bacon. Yeah, that's why we can sit. And then talk about the things that God did. And so whether it's parent to child, whether it is husband to wife, whether it is girlfriend and boyfriend, I want you to understand that uh, how many of you in the room right now are younger than 12? Uh, huh? <laughs> okay, good, great, great. Jasper, let's give Jasper a hand. Yeah, thanks, Jasper. Uh, <laughs> pretty soon, Jasper's going to need some guidance and instructions when young ladies start knocking at his door. Yeah. <laughs> but the point I make here, the point I make here, if we don't start that relationship piece with Jesus Christ this way, we will never be able to understand the relationship this way. And if you all were 
legit, you'd say amen. Because some of you all have jacked up some relationships. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been in that line. Yeah, you all have jacked up some, you know, and the main reason you jacked it up was you, you were just so full of so much pride that it was all about you. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, these attitudes exist in us, in our spirit, even when we try to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you all had some fairly good ideas that you wanted to give God that he should try? <laughs> yeah, amen. Brother, I appreciate you raising your hand because you, yeah, yeah. We do it all the time. We pray with a ready-made answer for him. All he's got to do is ask us how we want it answered. <laughs> Work with me on this one, brother. And, 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 and we'll tell him. As though he needed... I could barely get out of Algebra 1. What could I offer God? You better thank God for that cross activity because we wouldn't have a chance otherwise. You're not talking to somebody here that's just heard some stories. I've been there and done that. I'm not proud of it. I, I was the one rolling the fattest blunt. Do I need to define blunt? <laughs> In this crowd? <laughs> In this crowd? I was the one that was snorting cocaine. I was the one that was, you know, they talk about the sales of alcohol in the land. If you want to know how alcohol is doing, go get the numbers that they're doing with chasers. Nobody can tell me that alcohol is a fun thing until it gets in your bloodstream and then you don't care. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Not in this group. I mean, you may know some other men somewhere that might know what I'm talking about. And I'm not, time, I'm not peeping anybody's stuff. I'm just telling you where my life was. But listen, it didn't end there. Oh, it didn't start. Life for me didn't start until I met Jesus and until he met me. And let me help you with that in case you're clueless and you don't know what I'm talking about. It's a very simple thing. You don't even have to go to seminary to get it. First John chapter 5 and verse 12 says, He who has the Son of... He who has the Son... Has life! He does not have the Son of God, does not have life. That came to roost in my heart. I got him. He got me. And we've been walking ever since. When I found out I didn't need any of those things. In fact, everybody in here has probably rolled a fat blunt or snorted cocaine or had alcohol or was dabbling in promiscuity. Some of y'all weren't dabbling. Y'all were rolling promiscuity. Uh, uh, all of that. But you had a different label on it. Different label on it. You have a different label. Some of y'all you, you, were high on yourselves. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about. I told you, when you get quiet, it's just like saying it. So, so yeah, yeah, so you had to get that drug out of you, the drug of yourself. And some of you, you know, God's still working in that. Sometimes he can use a toothpick. The other time he needs a, a, a what are those things? Jackhammer. Okay, it's getting too quiet in here. Anyway. Did I tell you John chapter 15? Okay, let's, let's talk about what his intent was. Let's talk about what his intent was. Let's look at 15 and, and verse 2. I'll give you one for traction. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. So the anticipated, expected relationship with Christ Jesus, if you're going to have the excuse me, branch vine relationship, and you can't have any other relationship with Christ other than that. You know, it's so clear. He made it so plain. We don't have to turn there, but he made it so plain. Way back in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 24. Oh, yeah. He says this. He says, and it's so plain and simple. He says, I will be your God. And what does he say? And see, now, how, how many years do you have to spend in seminary to get that? I will be your God, and you will be my people. And you will walk in the ways in which I have instructed you. How hard is that? Let me show you how hard that is. What color am I? 
Well, as spoken by a true cowboy fan, you would expect a cowboy fan to respond like that. Let me reiterate it. Let me say it again. It's not hard. It's not hard. I will be your God. You will be my people. The answer to that question is as easy as answering what color I am. And I realize some of you always try to mess up not knowing whether to say black or Afro-American, but let's get free. Let's get way past that. Good Lord. Just love me. I don't care what you call me. Just love me like Jesus. Amen? Okay, so let's move on. So we're in, that, in that verse alone, he expects fruit. Also in that verse alone, he expects what? More fruit. He expects fruit, and then he expects more fruit. Absolutely. Let's look at uh, verse 5. Verse 5. We're going to get to the end of this in just a second. He says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Verse 5. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. So he's looking for fruit. He's looking for more fruit. And he's looking for much fruit. Oh, we're going to do some sampling in here. We're going to, you know, I'm a farmer. Okay, I'm not a farmer. Uh, I'm a fisherman now, but I'm a farmer. I used to be. Uh, I didn't even live on a farm. I was just telling Mike this morning, I didn't even live on a farm. My father was an agriculture extension agent who helps farmers in the land. In the little town I grew up, I was never without a job based on him. Yeah, he would lend me out to farmers like it was just, can I borrow your hammer? I mean, I thank God for it now on this side of it, but it won't. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> uh, in this whole relationship piece, let me stay in the, in the frame here. In this whole relationship piece with Christ, it's going to be fruit. It's going to be more fruit. It's going to be much fruit. Now, there's one more category that we got to talk about before we end. Let's look at verse 16 in that same chapter. Yeah. Are we there? You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit would do what? Ah, last or remaining fruit. There's a category, remaining fruit. You could get fat and happy about yourself and say, boy, you know what? I got much fruit. But he's looking for remaining fruit. Remaining fruit uh, 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 resembles or reflects, I should say, a uh, relationship, ongoing relationship. We, li we, we belong, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you belong to an eternal God. Eternity. When does that end? Never. Somebody wake up my cowboy friend, friend over there and, and explain it to him. Yeah, <laughs> eternal, it, eternal means forever. Eternal means forever. And so if we are going to be in Christ, there's a word in this passage and all throughout. Um, in fact, you'll find it in John 14, 21 and 23 as well. There's this abiding peace that we have to have with Christ if we're going to allow him. It's not even us producing fruit because none of us can produce it. We're just fruit bearers. We carry <laughs> fruit. Uh, <laughs> you remember when you met your first love? And you recognize some fruit caught your attention. You tracked her. She didn't even know you were tracking her. You know, I do uh, biblical <laughs> premarital counseling or discipleship is what I call it. And uh, I always ask him a question of when did you knew, know that you loved your husband to be? And I would ask them to put the date down. When did you know you, you loved your wife to be? And the dates tell a lot about them. More often than not, consistently, if they met in June, um, they knew they were in love, most wives, knew that they were in love way long before the husband did. Now, the things about wives and girlfriends, I'm helping somebody in here, I know I am. Listen, things about that is they're already pouring out. We're knuckleheads. We ain't figured it out. We think, oh, it's me. 
They're pouring out early because they already vested in you. They already think you're the one. And then we'll find some way to kind of mess that up. Somebody say, I mean, if we, that's what I told you earlier. I told you it done jacked up a whole lot of relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about. Because I know you're thinking, right? Those noodles, I can tell you, it smells like noodles are cooking in here. <laughs> so we have fruit. We have more fruit. We have much fruit. We have remaining fruit. Now, what I want you to do is that little uh, dish on your table that's not candy, I want you to pop the top on that. Somebody be a leader for your table. And there's a red cup, which is not for uh, alcohol shots. It's just... It's just so that you will put your bead in. Now, you choose your bead. Don't try to give somebody else a bead. When you look at your paper, and I want everybody in here to do it, when you look at your paper, oh, on the right side, left side, my left, your right, you'll see colors there. Get your color out the cup and put it, get it out the clear cup and put it in the red cup. You have, you got to get at a table and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if, 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 uh, do you all have beads and, and cups over there? Oh, you got to do that. You're wearing a Dallas t-shirt. For sure, you need to be. You, yeah, absolutely. Get that brother a cup. Yeah, take them on. Now, don't be looking around at the table at everybody else's selection. Just stop. Don't be looking. Yeah, just, just, when you get your bead, put it in there. Now, remember when I asked you, would you tell a lie if you had a chance to? <laughs> oh, keep it real. Keep, 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 keep it real with the brothers. <laughs> keep it real with the brothers. Nobody's going to judge it. In fact, if you look, the, 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 the red cups are going to come to me. I want to ask you, after you select your color out of the clear cup, please put, yeah, yeah, take it out of the clear cup and put your bead in the red cup. And then please put the top back on the clear cup because my wife told me to tell you to do that. Now, they don't let me do arts and crafts at home. That's not my, because so this is all her work here. Oh, do they? <laughs> all right. So all your tops back on the, on the deal. Okay. Um, all right. We all, we all cupped up over here. You need some time? Oh, you took, just pick. Oh, no. Yo, hey, hey, look. You can only put one in the cup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not asking you to put. What you want to be, I want you to ask, I'm asking you to put what you are and be real with yourself. Nobody gets this but me. Nobody gets this but me. And I don't even know the bulk of you in here. But I, I tell you one thing, there's a sweet spirit in this room. There's a good spirit in this room. I can tell you that. That's a good, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That has a lot to do with this man sitting over here. You know, sheep mimic the shepherd. Sheep mimic the shepherd. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, right now, you should, you should look into that clear, clear deal, pick out where you are. Are you a follower? Are you a disciple? Are you a babe? Are you one who has fruit? Are you one who has more fruit? Are you one that has much fruit? And are you one that has remaining fruit? Examine yourself. You know, Paul writes that over in 1 Corinthians chapter. He says, examine yourself and see if you're even in the faith. Oh, you need more? No, you only put... <laughs> no, 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 no. Put, only put one bead in the cup. That one bead reflects where you are spiritually. I'm going to sit some of you over there by the cowboy fan in a minute. <laughs> Listen, and that could be... A, that could be a severe punishment right there. Listen, you only need one bead that reflects where you are in your walk with Jesus right now. One bead. Please do not put 27 beads in the cup. The only ones that are doing that are the ones that may not want to be truthful. I want you to be real with yourself. Put that in the cup, if you will. Okay, now I'm going to... Uh, are y'all done here? You sure? Hey, listen, there are no right or wrong answers, only yours. It's not like you're going to get a, you know, I'm not giving out prizes. No great. No well, well, there's one greater. Can I have your red cup, please? You didn't look in the cup, did you? No, I did not. Okay, good, good. <laughs> All right. Um, as soon as we get through this process, now we're done here. Almost done. Take your time. I don't want you to rush in this decision. Okay. Remaining fruit that you're all in. That means that when, 
when you're walking, you're bearing fruit all the time. It's a consistent. Now, I, listen, everybody in this room is going to fall somewhere along the way. I get that. But what, I, what, what the scriptures are asking and what we get a snapshot of, are we walking with Jesus? Remember that word abide? Are we walking with him or are we just following him? Did I, did, we're good? You, you want to revisit? You want prayer? No, no, no. We, <laughs> all right, here we, here we go. We're done here? All right, here we go. I'm coming to your table. I do need to get these. You can just dump them in there. Oh, Lord. I'll, we're good. <laughs> did, did you put a bead in the cup? Yes, sir. Okay, good deal. Um, <laughs> all right, good deal. Good deal. Thank you. Got everybody's bead here. How about you guys? Well, you got like, look like you got 30 beads in the cup. Okay, we're good here. Oops, we're good here. And good deal. All right. Did Mike get out of the way? Now, what about here? Do I get? <laughs> do, we, do, do, do you all have some back there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have some. You got to have at least three. Three, yeah, 100%. 100%. Do we have them over here? Oh, yeah, we got to have 100%. We have it in here. Well, 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 can I have that cup right there? Everybody. Everybody. Um, what they used to tell me on the court. Uh, do we have another sheet, extra sheet? Um, this won't take long. Pretty soon we're going to get into the real teaching here. Oh, you got yours from over there? Oh, you got them from there. Okay. You got yours? You need to, yeah, give him a sheet right here, right here. Amen. We want everything. Because when Jesus comes through, everything that belongs to him is going. Amen. Yeah, we're going to rise up is what the scripture says. We're going to rise up and meet him in the sky. Looking forward to that day. But until then, we're going to occupy. Okay, thank you all for um, working through that with, for me. It's going to make my wife happy, too, because, like I said, she was the arts and crafts part of this presentation. And uh, I was just, Mike, you're just in time to put your bead in the cup. Um, okay, so what I want you to understand, let's look at uh, Luke in chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Now, all of these verses I'm giving you, please don't just read them and then go home. Did I get Mike's bead? Uh, do you, did, you, did you read the assignment? I did not. You, okay, so, okay, good deal. Uh, I'll get it when you're done. Um, I need you to make note of these scriptures. Uh, you know, a fun thing, whenever we used to go over to, I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but over to RFK, one of, the, one of the greatest places to experience a real, thank you, sir, a real football game done by real players, some, oh, what did I do? Yeah, that's right. Some of the worst experiences ever was having Dallas come to RFK. Some of the worst experience ever, on many levels, I might add. Anyway, nonetheless, people would get there about 8 o'clock that morning, oh, not soon, 8 o'clock that morning, and prepare for a 1 o'clock game that wasn't going to end until what time? Four-ish. Where, my, where are my math whizzes? How many hours is that? That's close enough. <laughs> they have my math whiz. They have my math whizzes. Yeah. I got everything from eight to seven to ten. That's all right. None of, it's more than 20 minutes. Can we say that? Yeah. If we'll spend eight to ten hours at the ballpark, how much time will we spend with Jesus? Come on, help us now. Come on. How much time will we spend with Jesus? Let me tell you something. If I hadn't spent time with Jesus, I know I would not be standing up here to, to, for you today talking about him and what I know he does. Not what I believe he does. There's a difference. Help me with this now. Yeah, all day long, and you all were, made me believe this, all day long you could sit there and look at those eggs and that bacon and the fruit and believe it could cure your hunger. But you weren't interested in believing that. What was it that you wanted? You wanted, 
Tony, you legit, you coming real. Yeah, you, you wanted to know it could, 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 could meet your hunger. That's how you got to be intimate with Jesus. Those brothers stood in a fire that was 10 times harder than it would have been for any other offense in front of the king. And they said this with conviction. Oh, king, we don't even need to pray about this. Yes, Lord Jesus, we don't even need to pray about this. And they said it with all grace and respect for the king's position. He says, we know that our God is able. But even if he doesn't. <laughs> oh, I believe that's what the shepherd's looking for today. People who know. Not just that he's able. But even with the outcome. The outcome is far better than anything we could have come up with on our own. Somehow when stuff got out of hand at school, we thought we should start filling it up with more security police. And then put in some, some, some metal detectors. They still blowing up schools left and right. We got a bigger problem than that. And let me tell you something before we get too left, right, and swervy. The answer is still Jesus. The answer is still Jesus. That brother says, you don't even have to come to my house. Just speak the word from here. And I know my servant will be healed. See, that's the relationship he's looking for. That's the power that he has. That's the power that resides in us if we got him. Let me say this to you. You can't tell because... My ears wiggle fast, but I got it. I got it. And I don't say that arrogantly. I say that because I know it in here. When I met my wife, I was a heathen. Ah, yeah, a heathen. I was, and in fact, let me, I was the worst kind of heathen, such as you all were, but I'm, no, I can't speak to you, but I just, he heathen, let me, let me tell you. I was the worst kind of heathen there was. You know what kind of heathen I was? Conservative. Reserved. Hellion. Wicked. Evil. That was me. I, I'm always been this wonderful. Yeah, I've always been this wonderful. You say, well, what in the world has Pastor Steve brought in here now? You see, uh, 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 I had a person tell me when there was all, all of this movement about trying to help black people out, they said, what can we do to really affect those who are marginalized in our communities? And, I, and this was from a brother in the Lord, with all due respect, until we get to the point that we realize that we are all marginalized, that's what motivates you doing. Realizing that according to Romans 3.23, what happened? We've all have sinned and fallen short. Come on now, help me. Go see that quietness? That's what's getting me. That's what's getting me. I love the quietness. I'd rather have the amens, but sometimes we can cover it up with the amens. Sometimes we say amens. Like, you know, everybody in the quiet ain't praising God. Some people just up there singing songs. Did I tell you to turn to Luke chapter 5? I don't want you all to just say amen. I want you to hear the heart of what God is saying. You know, oftentimes when we get into the scriptures and we set this reading plan up to get through the Bible in a year, knock that foolishness off. Get into the scriptures and let them take you for as long as they want to take you. Now, I'm not saying it's not a bad, that it's a bad thing to be rudimentary about reading the scriptures. Yes, it's called discipline. How many of you all, I can't ask that. How many of you all were taught to brush your teeth every day? That's a discipline. Yeah, that's a discipline. Uh, and, and we already have that ability within us. Why would we have it without God? I was estranged from my father for a bit because I didn't like what I saw alcohol do to our family. So I harbored bitterness. Now, I grew up in a time where if you were going to have conversations about something you weren't happy with, you had them in your bedroom at night when everybody was asleep. 
You didn't dare have, you didn't voice them. Now, some of the stuff I see today, oh, Lord Jesus. My goodness gracious. Some, 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 some. Well, they may as well come get me. Yeah, I mean, I, yes. how many of you all can say belt? Yeah, 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 belt. Uh, I came up in that era. <laughs> yeah, I came up in that era, just so you know. Now, I will say this to, to my father's uh, uh, faithfulness. I say faithfulness. I never got what I didn't earn. In other words, it wasn't just uh, target practice. I earned when I, went, when I got the woodshed, woodshed trip, <laughs> I earned it. it. Some of y'all don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Because I look around this room here, most of you probably did some stuff like sit in the corner for, for, for 30, 20 minutes. I wish they would have sat me in the corner for 30 minutes. I'd have sat there for two hours versus what I was going to get. Somebody say amen if you know what it is. See, ain't before five people saying amen. Now, you understand what I'm saying? Y'all been in time out too long. <laughs> well, I understand that. We live in a different time now. But listen, according to Jeremiah 17, 9, he says that above all things, the heart is what? It actually says desperately wicked. Yeah, desperately wicked. Now, that's not a momentary thing. That's ongoing. Do you, do you think you can be left alone by yourself without, and do anything? We, as men, left alone by ourselves, God said it right, right apropos, it is not good for you to be alone, Adam. That on, that's on many levels because most of our problems come from us being alone. Men, without being insulated, are way too isolated. Hear me what I'm saying now. And we think that this whole thing about church and coming together and having, no, I got nothing against men's breakfast. I've been to a lot of them. And spoke at a lot of them. Listen, um, um, how many books have you thought, do you think, been written, spiritual books, been written on discipleship and, and, and worship and how to lead and all of those things? You could, you could Google that and find some staggering figure. Tell me how jacked up you think the church is this day amidst all the resources that we have. Oh, like the rich man said, can you just send somebody back to my brothers and tell them hell is legit. Hell is legit. And so, and so, okay. Did I tell you to turn to Luke? How long ago was that? I want to say something about this whole dis true discipleship piece. We started about it uh, early on when he says, uh, if you continue my word, then you are my disciples. You're truly my disciples. I learned to be a true and, and, and am learning to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ with remaining fruit, if you will. And so um, um, that's the mark, a true disciple. You don't want to be a false disciple. That's why we went through this drill. And guess what will happen in this church when you start seeing true disciples sprout up everywhere? They're not going to be ashamed to let you know that they're true disciples. It takes a real man to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, you got to step aside. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, best of all, he says, I've been crucified in Christ. And that's another problem. We don't have enough men crucified. We're still trying to, <laughs> we're still trying to work our plan. Don't raise your hand. How many of you are still trying to work your plan? Sometime, somehow you're going to kind of fit Jesus into what it is you're doing. Let me help you with that. Get, get out of Luke 20. Uh, two, what did I tell you? Get out of Luke 5 right now. Head over to Psalm chapter 33. Please do this. I, this is going to save somebody's life in here. Uh, Psalm, what did I say? Psalm 33 in verse, uh, verse 10 and 11. It's going to save somebody's life in here. Because this will help you. You don't roll up on your last nerve because stuff ain't working. Are you there? Here's what the psalmist says. The Lord nullifies the counsel of the nations. The word nations there just means peoples. He said he frustrates the plan of the peoples. Verse 11, the counsel of the Lord stands how long? Anyone in, uh, 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 any Hebrew studied folks in here that could tell me for the Hebrew term of forever, what does that mean? 
forever. And who said that? Absolutely. I didn't know you had one in your midst. You, you, this brother Jim has studied Hebrew for a long time. And he knows that forever in the Hebrew means the same thing as it does in English. It means forever. We serve an eternal God. He says the plans of his heart. Listen, the plans of whose heart? His heart. From generation to generation. We're trying to figure out how to keep the millennials in church. Give them Jesus. Because otherwise, where are they going? That's what Peter asked over there when Jesus says, you want to leave me too? He said, where are you? <laughs> we leave? Where are we going if we leave? You think the world got some answers? You got to understand that the same mind that is causing the problem can't be the same mind that fixes it. Man, we look to Pennsylvania Avenue, we look to Capitol Hill, we look everywhere else but in here, and we give it everything else in here other than Jesus. I'm not backing down off of Jesus because I know Jesus works. I'm a product, a product of his. And I wasn't trying to be saved. I wasn't trying to be a son of God. And Lord knows I wasn't trying to be a pastor. But when it happens, it's like Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, my knees is weak. I feel like a drunk man with this word you put in me. It's like fire. We ain't got enough men on fire. Do you know that those two brothers on the road to Emmaus, when they were traveling with Jesus, the brother says, didn't our hearts, when he started doing what? Opening up the scriptures to us. We ain't got enough hearts set on, set on fire. You know, you know what? Do you know people move differently when they're on fire? Yes. Yeah, you know that it's a different it's a different gate to the people when they on fire. Yeah, are you seeing it on TV? Let let one of those action fixes fix fix action figures blow up something and, and somebody catches it on fire. Anyway, when are we as men gonna catch on fire for the Lord? Now don't get too worried about that in the analogy of it, because God can set a bush on fire and it not be consumed. He can set a bush on fire. Could he not set you on fire? Huh? Absolutely. I talk to pastors all the time. That's part of, of my job, if you will, and I love it. Because if we don't get it right in the pulpit, the pews, the, they, they jacked up as it is. They come in jacked up. Sometimes we come in jacked up in the pulpit. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about, because even if you don't say amen here, you're going to say it amen. I mean, this, this man wasn't born yesterday. Come on now. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. And let me tell you something with the crucible, with the, with the vices that are in the culture this day and time. I'm telling you, the same mind that's causing the problem can't be the same mind that fix it. It's okay for little Johnny to, to decide that he's Joan now. No, no, no. Come on. I, I, I don't care if you lose your mind. You can't make me lose mine. Mine is already committed. I've been crucified. Been crucified. I got a new mind. It's been renewed. Uh, how many of you all have had a, a, a chunk of fat back or ham hock that came out of a, a pot of navy beans ever in your life? that you testify about. Yes, Lord Jesus. I see y'all know what I'm talking about here. Yes, Lord. <laughs> so, so when you have tasted of, when you have tasted of that, nobody can tell you it doesn't exist. And I am so sick and tired of people showing up at church every Sunday. No fruit, no conversation. You know, I can't think of anywhere I saw Jesus went that he would go when he traveled on the earth for three and a half years and stuff didn't change. You know what I'm talking about? That's the same Jesus that you say lives in you. When you go somewhere, something ought to change. And if it doesn't change outside, there ought to be a change inside. Listen, let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. Does anybody remember some water that ended up being wine? 
That wasn't just a fairy tale or a story in the Bible because it didn't have enough words on the page. I know that took place. I don't believe it took place. I know it took place. How is it that I know it took place? Oh, he's not a God that he should lie. Did he not say it took place? By the Spirit of God. I know people wrote it, but they had to be superintended by the Holy Spirit to write it. Oh, okay, so that was a little far-fetched for you to put your head around. How about when Peter was incarcerated between four guards, laid out on a fall, bound and chained? You might remember that story. Here's the joy of that story, because I believe it just like it was communicated. This was over 2,000 years ago. Peter got a little tap on the shoulder. He woke up, woke up out of a sleep. He's going to die the next day. But he woke up out of a sleep. He was going to die the next day. But he woke up out of sleep. <laughs> Hang on, gets better. He didn't wake up anybody else with him. Gets better. He walks out to the gate. And here's where the story gets wonderful. According to the scriptures, it says that the gates open up on their own accord. Lord have mercy. If he can speak to gates. And what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that elevator company? Otis? We didn't learn about Otis till many years later. We had revolving doors and doors flying open on their own accord, and they, we barely had electricity. Oh, help me with this one, Lord. You go back and read it. He said the gates opened up on their own. I don't believe that happened. I know it did. Because he told me that. You see what he else he told me? He said, my son died on the cross for your, for your life, for your sins. I don't believe that. I know it. He said that there's going to be a woman by the name of Mary who is going to have a virgin birth who will become impregnated by the Holy Spirit of the Trinity of the living God. I don't believe she did. I know it. I know it. Because if, if, you, if you can't handle the virgin birth, forget about the resurrection. Did I tell you to turn to Luke? Good Lord, the, the Father is doing something in this place. Luke chapter 5. Are we there? I got to hurry up and get through this. Good gracious. Uh, how many of you all are ready to go? Don't, don't, don't raise your hand. Don't even raise your hand. Don't even raise your hand. Luke chapter 5, verse 27. Go there with me real quick. After that, he went out and noticed a tax collector named Levi sitting in the tax booth. And he said to him, what did he say? What did he say? Okay, now get with this. Verse 28. And he left everything behind and got up and began to follow him. Let me ask my Dallas friend. <laughs> Can you work that math for me and tell me how hard would that be? He said, follow me. The next verse said, he followed him. Do I need to go over that again? Are you good? <laughs> no. No, he says, he says, follow me. Now, listen, listen. You say, oh, that doesn't happen. It's the Holy Spirit calling Levi. Jesus said him, and Jesus is God. Holy Spirit is God. The Spirit of God said to anybody in here who has Jesus has said the same thing. Follow me. The struggle is, <laughs> the struggle is Levi followed him. What are we doing? And to follow him, he wasn't talking about just follow him around. If you're following Jesus, your life is going to change. Let me say this again. You won't even have to tell somebody, you know, my life has changed. No, they're going to know it. There was a, what's that thing that butterflies do? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That whole metal, what did I say? Metamorph. Metam See, you look at this. You was holding back. You took, you took some knowledge hostage. Now look here. Right. So, so, 
butterflies, metamorphosis, that transformation period. I told you I was a hellion when I met my wife, when I met my girlfriend, well, when, I, when we first started. He transformed me. I don't care what anybody else thinks about my life. That woman knows. Yeah, that's why I like for her to hear me preach and hear me talk or whatever, because she knows whether I'm blowing smoke or not. And will call me out on it. I don't need to blow smoke. Listen, I got one greater than my wife watching me. She doesn't think it sometimes. But the Holy Spirit is up on me. You know, that word help me in the Old Testament, just so you all know it and don't go home and be upset with your wife. Stop being upset with your wife if you are. Uh, that, whole, that word help me in the, in the, in the, in the Hebrew uh, means Holy Spirit-like. She's like, she's been a helper set in your life. I will give you a helpmate set in your life. Not your slave, none of that, but she's like what I call a co-pilot of the plane. We're responsible for flying it, but you know how they give the co-pilot some charts and they give them a little something over here to deal with, some dials and all of that? Y'all don't watch TV? Anyway. <laughs> so they, she's responsible for a set of stuff. And here's what, here's what they're supposed to do at Help Me, as Help Meets. Some of you are going to love this. You're going to take it home and say, baby, this is what you need to be doing. Here's what, here's what it is. They're supposed to speak into your life the oracles of God. That's an ongoing thing. But guess what? They don't do that if you don't wash them with the water of the word. And we don't always have to wash them with the water of the word by doing Bible studies with them. That's probably the last thing they want to do. They want to see a man of God who's been warped from the word of God, who's been built from the word of God, who has been come up out of the word of God. Do you know that God raised trees without any water on this land whatsoever? That shrubbery growing, just coming from his essence? Because you got to remember it hadn't even rained yet. Get in Genesis and read. You'll see I'm telling you the truth. If he, can, if he can cause shrubbery to grow, if he can raise up shrubbery from the ground, if he can raise up Adam from the ground, because he did, you remember, some dirt lumped up and shaped up, molded up. You remember that? And then he hit him with some Holy Spirit breath. And the next thing we know, we see this lump of dirt animated. Y'all tracking with me? What will happen if we let him raise Jesus up? What might happen? We've seen evidences of that all through Scripture where he's always raising up stuff. And he, we would say abnormal. But let me help you with this. If you're in the kingdom of God, that's normal. If you live in the kingdom of God, it shouldn't be, wow, look at that. That's who the Father is in the Son. Oh, I will show you great and mighty things. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, let me tell you this. This is what I, we talk about miracles. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ and you know you know, that's a miracle. We don't need to see no eyes come open again. We don't need to see a lame walk again. If we have become miracles of God, we walk out that miracle. At least that was, is what we're supposed to. Um, he called Levi. Guess what disciples do? They follow Christ. That's what I want you to take from Levi 27 and 28. Uh, 5, 27, 28. He called him. He followed. Look what he says. He said they, he left everything. Levi wasn't the most liked person in the community. <laughs> in the community. How many of you all have enemies? Two people? <laughs> How many of you all would lie? No, okay. No, no, no. Yeah, listen, listen. If you're living for Christ and you ain't got no enemies, you got a problem. Yeah, that's a bigger problem. That's a big, so you might not be living for Christ. We got to examine ourselves. Okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 2. I'm almost done. I'm actually not, but I know you all are waiting for me to say that. <laughs> That's the favorite phrase on Sunday morning. And as I conclude, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, are you there? Verse 2. The things which you have heard from me, Paul tells Timothy, in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men. Underline faithful. He didn't say entrust these to men. I wouldn't let y'all take the last canteen canteen award in the desert nowhere. Not you all. But you gotta be careful who you give the last canteen award to, don't you? <laughs> faithful men who will be able to teach 
others. That's what we're doing here. That's what he's doing every Sunday morning. When you're coming to church, you're not doing the pastor a favor. You're not doing the congregation a favor. You're not doing God a favor. He expects you to be assembling with the brothers and the sisters. Yeah, he expects that. And guess what? When we come, it's not... Some of you will come to church like you after that Whitman sampler. Huh. And some of you don't even know what a Whitman sampler is. And I get that. You know that little big box of hot chocolate, uh, uh, chocolate, uh, that little, yeah, that's in the shape of a heart. Please, somebody over here tell me, yeah, I know what I'm talking about, okay? Because they over there, they know, but I can't figure out where they are here or not. But yeah, yeah, box of chocolate. It's been a shape of a hot box, right? And you know, you got like about 47 pieces in there. 45 of them are nasty as all get out. The only two that's worth something is ones that got some nuts in them. You know, and you know, even after the chocolate's grown, you still can work with some nuts at least. But, but nonetheless, no, no. Some of you will come to church like that. You're looking for a, the, the right piece of candy in the, in, the, in the Whitman sampler. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, this ain't my first rodeo. This is not my first rodeo, and I know that. Jesus, <laughs> when they came to arrest Jesus, he said, what would you come looking for? They couldn't arrest Jesus. He says, no, no man can take my life. I've been given the authority to lay it down, and I can pick it up any time I wanted to. But who are we looking for? Oh, John the Baptist echoed that same thing from prison when he was going to be beheaded the next day. And he sent some folks over there and said, look, go find out if Jesus is the deal. Because I'm feeling a little sweaty in here. He's going to die the next day. He just went up and confronted government. And government says, tomorrow you die. Uh, are we ready to take a knee for Jesus in that way? Yeah, when government says something and Jesus says another. Y'all hear me? Because you got quiet there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Disciples, they follow Christ. Disciples make disciples of Christ. If you're following along and you're writing these notes down, they make disciples of Christ. So you've got to be still long enough for him to pour into you so that you can pour into others. And that's called faithfulness. Was Christ faithful? You know, you can't almost be pregnant the way it's set up. You either are or you're not. You, check with my Dallas friend and see if that, does that compute? You good with that? Christ didn't almost go to the cross. He went. And he went for the likes of you, 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 you and me. Yeah, we can't almost follow him. We can't almost spend time with him. I hope y'all don't treat Christ like you treat your wives. <laughs> I ain't meddling because I don't know nothing, but I'm a man. I'm a husband. I know. I know. I ain't making stuff up. I ain't read this in the book or saw it on TV. This is real time. And see, when you're doing it as unto Christ, as unto the Lord, I heard the Holy Spirit distinctly say, one day when I was trying to win an argument in my house, I heard the Holy Spirit distinctively speak to me and say, you realize that's my daughter you're talking to. That's a whole different day to when, the, when the rabbit has the gun. That's a whole different day in the forest, ain't it? Yes, Lord, I woke me right up, sobered me. And from that day, that was many years ago, from that day forward going on, man, I'm, I'm, she's a proponent. She's not an opponent. Somebody take that home, that's going to save you. She's a proponent of the relationship. Not an opponent. Uh, according to Proverbs, it says that the, the, heart, the, the heart of her husband, trust her. Woo, that's when you know you're doing it right. You, you don't, don't get cocky and, and arrogant on me here. I'm saying if you're loving her right, that loves. If you want tomatoes, you got to plant tomato seeds. If you want to be trusted, you got to plant trust. If you want love, you got to plant love. 
Yeah, you got to plant love. So disciples, make other disciples. Let me help you with this, man. While we can't afford to sit around anymore and just hear nice sermons on Sunday morning, we got to live Monday through Saturday too, right? I don't care what you do on the front pew on Sunday morning in church. I'm looking at you in the, in the, uh, in the checkout line at Walmart on Thursday. Yeah, that's when the real ministry is taking place. Or either out there where you cussing somebody out because they cut you off on, I don't mean in here, I mean, but you know me, people like that. You know people like that. I know you do. <laughs> so, oh, I know you do. You haven't seen it when you're pushing the basket to the checkout thing and, and you know they cut in front of you. Yeah, they saw you were going there. So rather than address that, you just sit there and have that conversation. And you, yeah, anybody? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gets us in trouble more than in the, in the park, yeah, the parking lot. Oh, brother, you sound like, yeah. <laughs> Let's go one last place. Let's look at John 12 and verse 26. John 12 and 26. Christ's disciples, they follow him. They make other disciples. You can't make a disciple unless you are a disciple. You got to ask yourself, would I want to duplicate what I am? Would I want God to duplicate what I am? In other people. Uh, in fact, some of you all would say no, if you would be truthful. Hey, are we there yet? Uh, did I say 12? John 12? Yeah, oh, I said 26 too. Yeah, yeah. So this is Jesus speaking again. And here's where I get a little, not, not questioning. I don't care about questioning. It's, I think this is where we have to do the deep dive in our hearts. Jesus says something very distinct in this verse. He who serves me, what's the first thing he's got to be doing? He's got to follow me. More often than not, we have many people serving in the church under the umbrella of volunteering. How many of you ever heard of it? Ah, oh, getting ready to tiptoe here, tiptoe here again. Let me just, I'll put this out there, and you can wrestle with it, but it's truth. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. In the kingdom of God, there are zero volunteers. I don't care what the culture calls them. PTA, they're looking for volunteers. Uh, uh, Salvation Army. Looking for volunteers. Any others? You know, they're all out through the community. The definition of a volunteer is different than the definition of a servant. A servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who we have and supposed to have in our churches. The next time you hear volunteer in this church, and it could come from anywhere because we are so accustomed to the language. We'll take quickly what the culture says before we will even check it against Scripture. Y'all, this is long before we get to church. I mean, there is too much. Maybe it's me. Yeah, I'm going there because I can and I know that the Lord Jesus is with me. Listen. <laughs> In a democracy, you get a chance to Oh, who said it? Yes, vote. In a democracy, in a theocracy, of which we are, if we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, Peter says it to the aliens out there. Jesus said it. My kingdom is not of this realm. We're from a theocracy, meaning that the Trinity holds all the spots. And just side note, no vacancies there. On a side note. We don't need to vote in the kingdom of God. You know why? Because we have a high priest who knows everything we've ever been through. So it's not necessary for us to carry a sign or a placket or this or that to pronounce who we are. Do you realize on the calendar we're running out of days to celebrate folks? Y'all ain't hearing me. Don't make me say this in here because I will. 
I thank God for celebrations. I mean, that's just another day off, right? I asked people the other day, hey, listen, tell me something. How are you going to celebrate Martin Luther King's holiday? Well, I don't have to go to work that day. I don't care whether you celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. In fact, I hope they stop doing that. We take one day to celebrate and then live like all, all the rest of the time. Are you hearing my heart? I don't want you to celebrate me. Let's celebrate Jesus. Can we give him? Everybody else is getting a day and we're taking his out. We don't even know what Christmas is anymore. Somebody say amen if you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Oh, I'm talking real stuff here today. I mean, I hope you won't be the same when you go home, if you ever get home. But I mean, I just, I just, did I tell you to turn to John 12, 12 26. Amen. Amen. And that's eternal. Listen, listen, listen. He who serves must follow me. Why is it that? It's because serving is not an external application of some particular gifts or abilities that you have. Everyone in this room, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you have, you have a, a gift from the Holy Spirit. And either you're using that gift, and that gift, let me tell you what it is exclusively. That gift exclusively is for the body of Christ. It's for the body of Christ. And if you're not using your gift in this body, you're robbing it. You are a thief. Ooh, y'all ain't gonna ever have me back. I know that for sure. But, 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 but yeah, I gotta call it like it is. We're robbing one another when we're not using our gifts. My gift is to encourage and strengthen those who can't even see point B because they're stuck at A. But God does it. It's the Holy Spirit that oversees gifts. You get your gifts from the Holy Spirit. Listen, don't get your abilities confused with your gift. When did you get your abilities? Let me help you with this. Else, We'll be five o'clock getting out of here. You got them at birth. You got them at birth. You know people who can work with numbers, crunch them, and don't even need a calculator? I work with an abacus, but I mean, I'm saying people, it, 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 they are just gifted that way. That's a, an ability that they have. Michael Jordan, when did he get the ability to play basketball? When he was born. It was given to him when he was born. Did he have to develop that gift? He didn't just walk around and all of a sudden he was, no, 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 no. So, so, when do you get your spiritual gifts? When you're born. Well, no, not when you're born. When you're born again. That's when you get spiritual gifts. When you were born again. You didn't have them before then. But once you truly were born again, God gave you a spiritual gift. And that, those gifts need to be in operation with one another. Okay, okay. So, so, so here's where disciples follow Christ, disciples make other disciples, and disciples serve. One of the best examples of your service unto Christ is serving him first. How do we serve Christ? By being at his feet. Remember Martha and Mary? Jesus came to their home. Moth, ooh, ooh, is this yours? Is that yours? Okay, can you, because my wife will yell at you if I tell her you left one of those beads on the floor. Here, let me, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to put it right here in the cup. Okay. Martha let Jesus into her home. Mary let Jesus into her heart. Different locations. She's at his feet. That's how we serve him. Because you get your going orders, your instructions. Now you go out and serve. Remember the scripture, Matthew 22, 37. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And what did he say the second one was like? It's like the first. Love your neighbor. How? 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 Which means we have to take unconditional love and love ourselves with it. That's another reason why we got a stagnancy, if you will, in the church sometimes when men are called into fellowship with one another, but they are not allowing the love of God, unconditional love of God, impact their own lives. So if it doesn't impact their own lives, they ain't going to love their wives. They ain't going to love their children. They're not going to love their neighbor. They're not going to love whomever. Are you hearing me? 
I told you I've always been this wonderful. It wasn't until I got bitten by unconditional love. My wife was the first example of that. And she wasn't even preaching to me. The more I pushed her out of my life, the more she kept coming. Because now in my head, I thought, man, that's me. My Mac must be tight. Y'all ain't hearing me. But nonetheless, no, no, no. Knucklehead. <laughs> the, the love of God kept flowing in my life from that woman without even cracking the Bible. Now, she had some help. They didn't even know each other, but my mother was praying for me as well. They, they, she would give me a track every time I'd visit her, and I'd put that track right in the trash can on the way out the door. And that was me. Don't look at me like that. I'm just telling you how where I was. Oh, but that woman prayed for me. As some of you here have, either your grandmother, your mother, somebody. In fact, I thought I was the only one sinning. My mother was praying so hard for me. But in terms of what dis true disciples do, true disciples do, we have to learn to be a disciple, follow him, make other disciples, and then serve him one-on-one -on -one vertically in order to serve him horizontally. Stand to your feet if you will. I believe Wooten. It's, you're going to close us in prayer. But I, here's what I want to do. Oh, Jim's going to come next? Oh, so, so I do. Okay. Okay. Then that's fine. That's fine. I just want to pray over this group. You've been very, I, I almost said pleasant. I hope you've been very pleasant. You've been pleasant to me. You've been comforting to me. And I thank God for allowing you to allow me to speak into your life on the leadership of his Holy Spirit. Let's bow our heads, if you will. Father God, I do thank you for what you've done in this place today. And Lord, I pray now that even as you continue to finish up what your desire was, what you wanted to accomplish today, Lord, your word says, your word says that you send your word as the rain and it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that for which you sent it. And so, Father, right now, I present these men to you. Under the sound of my voice, I present these men to you. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Milton, I'm not sure I know the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know that I've made a personal commitment to receive him. I've heard it. I've been on the fringe. I see myself following him. But I don't know if I have consciously made a decision to accept him to be Savior and Lord of my life. I want you to raise your hand right where you are. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ and you died before you got home today, that you would spend eternity with him. I want you to raise your hand right where you are. If through this point in time you say, Pastor Milton, I've sat under this word here today and I've heard some things that have really pricked my heart to reveal to me I'm not in that place that God would want me to be. And I want to die today. I want to be crucified in my heart today so that I might live for him, that I might glorify him. If that's you in this place, I want you to raise your hand right where you are. I'm not living the way I ought to be. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If I'm not, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm not living the way I ought to be, the way you've called me. I'm your son, but I'm not living that way, Lord God. If you're in this place in that way, I want you to just raise your hand right where you are. I just want to pray all over this room. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, you've seen the hands uh, that were raised before you. You see them individually, Lord, and particularly. You see them clearly. Father, rain down on them right now. Change their lives. Change their desire. Help them to grow and glorify you in all of what they say and do. And Lord God, let it be recognized by their spirit that they've been with Jesus today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.